Hello, this is Summon Guy in Hawaii, and this is a relatively detailed look at the Clairvoyance, a legendary Jacob's Assault Rifle only available in the Love Guns and Tentacles DLC. We must have that DLC to acquire and use the weapon, okay? We get this gun from Critchy, a hammerlock hunt objective on the Cursehaven map. Spawn in at the Weathernot Cemetery fast travel, go right, then left up the stairs just before the bridge, hang on the left at the top of the stairs, and then go straight. The gun only comes in cryo. Hitting a crit spot ricochets an additional projectile at a nearby enemy, the normal feature of most Jacob's weapons. Additionally, however, hitting a crit spot also plants a sticky on the target, which explodes a short time later for additional damage. Multiple stickies will explode together. Now, These features plus fairly high base damage ratings make it one of the best ARs currently in the game. Okay. Two things we really need to understand about the clairvoyance to get the most from it. Number one, we must go for critical hits as often as possible. If we're not critting, we are not getting anywhere near the max performance from the gun and we're wasting our time. This includes flak. Megavore gets us crits from body shots only approximately 20% of the time. If we're only going for body shots, that's 20% of what we could be doing under ideal conditions. Two, this gun has a lot of variable parts which leads to a lot of variance. The performance range amongst those variants is so wide that sometimes, a lot of times, parts are more important than level. As a matter of fact, sometimes the right parts are more important than anointments. Okay. So let's start with how this gun does damage, specifically critting. Okay. A critical hit with a baseline clairvoyance with no extra crit boosting parts does 4.4 times the listed base damage. If we include the ricochet, that base multiplier can be as high as 6.6. .6. And that doesn't include the slowing and freezing effects of cryo, which I'll get to shortly. This is a level 23 variant. I'm using a low level copy because the visual damage numbers for anything approaching level 57 will, above 10k, get rounded off by the game. This one does 227 base damage. A critical hit will double that. This is a Jacobs, however, which gives it an additional plus 10% crit bonus. So a crit will do 499. And we do that twice, once on the initial hit, and again when the sticky explodes for 998 total or 4.4 times the listed damage. This is the bare minimum any clairvoyance will do when we crit, 4.4 times the listed damage. There are also three optional parts that each boost critical hit damage by 10%. The damage multiplier goes up depending on how many of these a variant has. Additionally, when the sticky goes off, we get that ricochet, and that can do at least 2.2 times the base if it hits an enemy. Sometimes the nearest enemy is blocked by the environment, sometimes the enemy crit spot is blocked, and it does base damage. But if it has a direct line to a crit spot, the ricochet gets all the crit bonuses as well, just not the sticky. Okay. This is also a cryo weapon. It slows and eventually freezes the target with sustained fire. Now its base cryo efficiency of 88% is a little on the low side, but cryo slowing effect should not be underestimated. The ricochets are cryo as well, which means those targets are slowed and possibly frozen. We can also do a lot of things to increase cryo efficiency and cryo damage with skills, gear, and guardian rank perks. Also, because stickies applied in quick succession explode all at once, that sudden burst of damage is often en enough to freeze the target, giving us time to finish it off. Okay. Lastly, if the target has multiple colored health bars, shield of course, but especially armor, we don't have to reach the freeze threshold on the last one to freeze them. It's either the total of all the bars or just the current one. I'm not sure which. I haven't tested it, but this appears to be the case in my own play. Okay. So that's how the gun does damage and why critting is so important. Going for crits means we often kill the enemy faster than if we just aim for the body and spam the trigger. Okay. This doesn't work for all situations. Occasionally we get overwhelmed and we need to shoot as fast as possible. Taking the time to be precise and crit can get us killed. In those situations we should probably switch to a different weapon if possible. Also, even in the best of situations, we're going to miss some shots or hit but fail to crit. So with that in mind, we're going to look at gun performance using three main tools. Base damage per second, or DPS, critical hit DPS, and critical hit damage per shot. Okay, Critical hit damage per shot is self-explanatory, how much damage a single critical hit does. I just talked about that. Okay, DPS is the damage we do per second when firing as fast as we can till empty reloading and repeating that cycle until the target is dead. We do base damage DPS when we spam body shots as fast as possible. We do critical hit DPS when we spam critical hits as fast as possible. 
Critical hit DPS is essentially base damage DPS multiplied by any and all damage multipliers we get from critting. It's important to understand, however, that DPS figures are maximums. They're ideal numbers that are rarely if ever reached in actual gameplay. Any DPS figure assumes continually firing as fast as possible and hitting with every shot. And nobody is that good. Okay? Under ideal circumstances, a big stationary or slow moving target, we can get pretty close to that goal, okay? base damage wise, spamming body shots. When it comes to critting, however, that's pretty much impossible. Crit spots tend to be a lot smaller than the target itself and only visible from certain angles. If the enemy is facing the wrong way, we're not critting until we address that fact. At the very least, critting often means waiting or maneuvering to get shots on a crit spot. And while we're doing that, we often end up spamming body shots because doing some damage is better than doing none. Okay? So while we want to always go for crits, actual gameplay typically involves a mix of body shots and crit shots. This is why I have included critical hit damage per shot. Critical hit DPS is one way to compare overall performance between, between variants. Critical hit per shot, however, may be a better indicator of the real performance difference between variants given the way we actually go for and get crits in the game. I'm going to leave it up to you and decide which you prefer. I'm going to give you all that information. I'm going to throw up some tables with both percentages and actual base DPS, critical hit DPS, and critical hit per shot numbers for clairvoyances from Mayhem 0 through Mayhem 10 okay, to illustrate certain points. I just want to remind everyone again that when we look at these numbers, understand that DPS is more of a comparative tool and less a hard and fast number. Okay. Now calculating DPS involves plugging in damage, crit bonuses, effective magazine size, rate of fire, and reload speed into a formula. I did a separate video on this linked below. Variations in these stats depend on individual parts. So let's take a look at the parts. Okay, All Clairvoyance ARs come with the same standard barrel, which conveys plus 75% damage to the underlying base value for any given level. That's the only standard part, not going to mention again, only not going to worry about the plus 75% either. I ignore that pretty much in my math. All other parts vary and include four different triggers, three different barrel accessories, any variant will possess at least two and can have all three, three different bolts, four different baseline magazines, five different stocks, each with its own optional stock accessory, four different foregrips, and three different sights. Now, this table lists all those parts and their associated modifiers, except for the three sites, which don't modify any of the listed stats. You can pause the video and inspect the table at your leisure. Now, doing the math on these numbers, assuming all possible combinations exist, assuming certain part combos are not prohibited, this gives a maximum of as many as 23,040 different variants, not factoring in anointments. Now, I have looked at around 500 examples of this gun, a small fraction of all the possible combinations. But within those 500, I have identified all the possible parts, as I showed in the table, as well as all possible part combinations, and calculated how they affect weapon stats, which is what's, what matters. Okay, That is what this spreadsheet does. It lists the parts, modifiers, and resulting calculated stats for 7,680 part combinations. Don't need to do it for all 23,000 plus because the three sites don't affect the listed stats. I've also not bothered with accuracy or handling at this point. Now the damage figures are percentages relative to the underlying base damage figure for a given level of the weapon. At level 57, Mayhem 0, that's about 3544, which includes the plus 75% from the stock barrel. Now these reload speeds, rates of fire, and effective mag sizes, however, are what will actually appear on the weapon stat cog. Uh, cart. Now, this column is total damage per individual shot. This is single shot, shot damage when we crit, base damage DPS, spamming body shots, critical hit DPS, spamming critical hits. This is single shot crit damage divided by base damage DPS, a special number I'll come back to later. Now I can sort the table on any of these columns and get a high to low ranking of each weapon based on that column. These tables show the results of those rankings. Okay, The range of values high and low for those columns for every level 57 variant from Mayhem 0 through Mayhem 10. High and low single shot and high and low masher. Masher's fire four projectiles per shot, more on that later. 
Now remember when I mentioned up front that parts can be more important than a level. This is where we start to get into that. Base damage for any BL3 gun is only 9% higher than the previous level. First, let's take a look at base damage to DPS. If we compare the highest percentage, 385%, with the bottom, 226%, that's a difference of 44%. 226 plus 44% is 385. Okay. The best clairvoyance at spamming body shots is only 44% better at than the worst. Okay, 44% is equivalent to between 4 and 5 levels of gun damage. Look at the critical hit DPS table. The difference between high and low is 80%, about 7 levels of gun damage. Now look at the crit damage per shot table. The difference between high and low crit damage per shot performance is 245%. That's between 14 and 15 levels of gun damage. Okay. Take a look at the highest performing Mayhem 4 gun in the base damage DPS table. A little over 19k damage per shot per second. Okay. Now look at the lowest performing Mayhem 10 gun, a little under 19k. Okay. This pattern is repeated on all tables. Look at the Mayhem 4 of the crit DPS table, a high of almost 93. The lowest performing M10 gun, 86k. It's most pronounced on the crit damage per shot table. 50k high for Mayhem 0 versus about 30k low for Mayhem 10. Okay, Whatever benchmark we use to judge performance, these numbers tell us that we can have two different clairvoyance ARs several levels apart, including Mayhem levels, and the lower gun may be the better performer. This also means that we can have two different clairvoyance ARs at the same or different levels apart, one with a good anointment and one with a lesser anointment, or none, and the one with the lesser anointment can be the better performer. The point is, don't automatically dump your lower level stuff when higher level stuff shows up. Look at the stats, maybe do some math, maybe do some testing, okay? So, this is the point in the video where I would normally tell you that after doing the math and analyzing the spreadsheet, there are specific parts to look for. I tell you to go for the smaller magazines, which have higher damage and faster reload times. A common theme in Borderlands 3. I tell you to favor this trigger over that one. Pick this stock first, this one second, etc. Can't do it. Because there are so many parts with mods to damage, crit damage, fi rate of fire, reload speed, magazine size, the stats that figure into DPS, no one or two parts predominate. Okay, We can have a variant with one or two crappy parts that are more than compensated for by other really good ones. Okay, There are 11 different parts alone that affect damage, which results in 113 different damage numbers at any given level. Okay, So what I have done instead is post a spreadsheet file on Google Docs. Uh, which you can use in a couple different ways. It has three separate pages or sheets. Okay, The first sheet or page has a plug-in formula that calculates base damage DPS, crit damage DPS, and single shot critical hit damage. It's protected. All the cells except the green ones are locked, but there's no password. You can unprotect the sheet if you want to. All you have to do though is substitute the numbers on our weapon stat card for the existing sample numbers to find our DPS and crit shot numbers. Do that for two or more weapons to make comparisons. We can also take those numbers to sheet number two, which I've already showed you a moment ago. This one has the table showing the range of actual values for these numbers for every level 57 variant from Mayhem 0 through Mayhem 10. There are also additional figures down at the bottom showing the range and except in the case of damage, all possible variables, both all possible values for each of the main stats. This way we can see where our gun ranks performance-wise, see how close our gun is to the bottom or hopefully the top of a particular range. If we understand what's high and low for each stat, we'll be better able to look at the numbers and get a feel for how our gun measures up and whether or not we should maybe keep farming for a better one. Okay. On the very last page, I've included the huge baseline spreadsheet I've been using to analyze all this. It's a big daunting table with a lot of stuff I don't explain. Uh, I may do that in a separate video. You don't have to mess with that at all if you don't want to. That's what the first two sheets are for. If, however, you're really that OCD, knock yourself out. And if you find errors, let me know so I can correct things and maybe change my conclusions. FYI, it is remotely possible that you'll get a gun that produces numbers slightly lower than the lowest figure in the table, or better yet, slightly higher than the high end. Also, if you use the big, spree, big spreadsheet, a lot of damage and DPS numbers won't match up exactly. Okay. This is because the numbers on actual stat cards rarely if ever reflect the underlying numbers in the game code. 
those are almost always rounded off. And I have to use those rounded off numbers in my calculations. The differences, however, should be minor, never more than 0.01%. Now, if you find a significant difference bigger than that, please let me know so I can again correct things. Also, none of these tools considers anointments, but most of the time that math is fairly simple. If you have plus 100% damage mod anoint, double your DPS. Plus 200, triple it. Plus 250 multiplied by 3.5, 75%, 1.75, etc. Okay. Be careful. Some anointment math is deceptive and at times inaccurate. The plus 125% versus badasses and named enemies only applies to base kinetic damage, as so I've been told. Okay. The 500% Nova applies to elemental damage, not base gun damage. Okay. Best thing to do with or without these tools is test the weapon or weapons against each other, especially when anointments are involved. Test it out in the game. Okay. I do this all the time. It's part of the fun of the game for me. Oftentimes when I do this, a gun performs better than I expected. Now there's one other number I mentioned but not explained yet. That's this critical hit per shot damage divided by base damage DPS. This is an extra tool for better understanding your particular weapon and getting the most from it. Okay. Base DPS is maximum damage from spamming body shots. Critical hit damage is self-explanatory. Okay. This number in seconds is how much time we have to get a critical hit and match or exceed base DPS. Okay. This 5.65 number here, the highest possible one, means that if we get at least one critical hit in the space of 5.65 seconds, we will equal or exceed the damage we do spamming body shots for 5.65 seconds. Okay, Think of it as a window of time. The more crits we get in that space of time, the more we maximize our total damage. This is all calculated for you on that first page. Now, if you look at the tables closer, you may notice something else. On the DPS tables, single shot variants occupy the top spots with the highest master variant not too far behind and the top percent one percent in both cases from a dps standpoint there's a mix of single shot and master variants scattered throughout the rankings okay on the critical hit per shot table though masters occupy the upper ranks and the first single shot variant is 15 percent from the top spot okay not all masters are grouped up top there are masters a little over the third of the way down the ranking we still have to look at the numbers okay but the very top 1600 or so are all mashers. What's going on here? Okay, Masher rounds suffer big penalties, most notably to damage, minus 58%, and rate of fire, minus 30%. They also consume two ammo per shot. All these things work against DPS. But the damage penalty is deceptive because it's per projectile. Minus 58% means each projectile does 42% of its non-masher cousin. But 4 times 42% is 168%. If we hit with all pellets with a master shot, we do 68% more base damage than an equivalent non-master variant with a standard or crank trigger. 58% okay, more compared with a lever action trigger variant. Okay. Even if we only hit with 3 of the 4 pellets, we're still doing more damage than our non-master cousins. Okay. And increases in damage multiply when critting. Mashers aren't as accurate as non-mashers. There is a spread to the pellets, but it's actually not as wide as you might think. Test it out for yourself. I'll touch upon this again shortly. So I've given you some tools to gauge how well your gun performs in different ways against other variants. This will hopefully help you better decide which is right for you, your character, your playstyle, and also when to keep one and drop another. Okay, DPS or single shot crit damage. Reality is somewhere in between. Just remember, always concentrate on getting crits. Now, a few other things I need to cover. I alluded a moment ago to accuracy regarding mashers. Accuracy in handling tends to be very subjective. I usually don't worry too much about them. Uh, I tell people to test out a weapon and decide for themselves how it handles. Okay? I have, however, noticed some consistent factors with the clairvoyance. Okay? Handling-wise, the base gun does have a bit of a kit, a noticeable recoil. It's manageable, but we do have to manage it, especially if we're going for crits, so keep that in mind. Practice with it till you know just how much to compensate with the control stick or mouse. There are also two four grips, four grips, and one stock that can reduce this by 30% each. We can seek those out if it's really a problem. Now, accuracy is mainly an issue with the masher. We want to try and hit with all four pellets, especially when critting. Okay. Fortunately, the size of uncertainty and accuracy is right there on the screen, even with iron sights. Everything will fall within that circle. Additionally, aiming down sights tightens up the pattern even more. Okay, now clairvoyances have three different sights. 
iron sights 1.7 power and 3.3 power which to use is personal preference I love to snipe with this thing so 3.3 is always my go-to I never want to be so close I can't use it and hip firing with it if need be is still fairly accurate but again up to you personal choice last thing naming conventions all clairvoyance ARs come with one or two prefixes and one possible suffix the masher suffix denotes the four pellet per shot characteristic and all that's good or bad about that. Okay, enough said. Of the prefixes, some can be standalone, some can come only after another prefix, two only appear either alone or before a second prefix, all of which is potentially confusing and not important as far as I can tell. This seems to be the pattern with Borderlands 3 versus Borderlands 2, wherein for the most part, specific prefixes do not designate special abilities. Okay, just specific part combinations. I could be wrong, but that's what I'm seeing. Now there are at least two exceptions, the Gatlin and Loaded prefixes. As far as I can tell, these are never preceded by another prefix and they never go together. I've never seen a Loaded Gatlin or a, Golden, or a Gatlin Loaded variant and I don't expect to. Okay, Gatlin is a little deceptive. Lots of people express a preference for Gatlin variants because they're full auto. Okay, All Gatlin variants come with the crank trigger which conveys full auto capability and plus 10% to rate of fire. However, not all variants with that crank trigger are Gatlin variants. Okay, one of my current go-tos is a loaded dastardly variant, which comes with that crank trigger. I can go full auto. So don't get too hung up on the Gatlin prefix unless you just like the way it sounds, and admittedly, it sounds pretty cool. The loaded prefix signifies this stock and accessory combination, which provides four additional shots to any magazine. This means we keep whatever damage and reload speed modifiers that come with the base magazine but with four more shots before we have to reload, which means higher DPS. As an aside, I said a minute ago I'd yet to find a clairvoyance with both loaded and Gatlin prefixes. While the loaded Dashley variant with the crank trigger I noted as my go-to, it's, it's basically a loaded Gatlin and all but name. Okay. Again, the rest of the prefixes don't appear to designate anything more than specific part combination, although I could be wrong. Unlike the Western gun, however, I don't anticipate seeing anything close to all 23,040 variants to confirm or refute that notion. Okay, And that's it. Okay, I absolutely love this gun. It's a key part of a sniper but a long range siren build I'm working on. I'm still looking for better ones than my current copies. Now it was here that I was going to stick some extra material, some gameplay footage, deeper explanation of the spreadsheet, mention videos I may put up in the future. I will instead probably stick that in a separate video so as not to make this one any longer than it already is. Also one other thing before I go, with a lot of videos I do, things end up more complicated and time consuming than I anticipate. Okay, I've rewritten this one at least six times. I've started editing it three different times, reevaluated the numbers, corrected mistakes and calculations, been surprised on many occasions. None of this has lessened my enjoyment of the game, quite the opposite. The one thing it has cut into, however, is my ability to turn out more videos more often. I really en enjoy doing them. But I also want to get it right and then give you accurate info, especially as my subscriber numbers have been creeping up slowly as of late. Okay, so I thank all of you for that. I want to give you more. I'm working on it. In any case, I hope you learned something. I sure as hell did. Thank you for watching.